Code Chart Watchers and Decision Point Faithful, welcome to this Monday, September 20th, 2021 Decision Point Show. Quite a day of trading. I am here with my dad. What are you thinking right now? Oh, yeah, it's, it was quite exciting and, and got some interesting things to look at. Absolutely. Uh, we had a trading room going on this morning, my free trading room. And we had a lot of discussion in there about the sell-off that was occurring most of today. So, Dad, you're going to be overlooking the SPY and the indicators that we have. But also, I know you were going to talk a little bit more about climax analysis. I'm definitely curious. I haven't had a chance to look at our climax charts yet. So I'm curious what you have to say about them. We had an intermediate term trend model neutral signal on materials. So we'll take a peek at the materials sector chart and look under the hood. And then I'm going to look very briefly at the FANG Plus stocks because they were really our safety net. They were really keeping the market up. We've been talking about this. And today they all had terrible days pretty much. And so consequently, of course, we saw the market um, drained pretty hard. So I mentioned our Decision Point live trading room. I do these on Mondays. You can register for free. Just sign up for our newsletter, or you can go to our homepage and you'll see the um, my picture talking about the trading room. And if you click on that, it will also take you directly to uh, the registration for Monday's trading rooms from noon to 1 p.m. Eastern. All right, well, here's our sector scoreboard. And as I mentioned, uh, materials did end up with an intermediate term trend model neutral signal. This occurred because we had the 20-day EMA move below the 50-day EMA on materials. It's only a neutral and not a sell signal because that crossover occurred above the 200-day EMA. So we don't go into full sell signal mode if uh, we still have a somewhat bullish configuration on a chart, meaning the 50 is above the 200. Last week, we also saw the industrial sector get a neutral signal as well. So things were already starting to look a little um, bit iffy under the surface already. So let's go look at some charts. I'm going to pass the screen over to you, Dad, and let's take a look at some of those indicators. Okay. See if I can figure it out. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> well, last week uh, we had uh, this more accelerated uh, uh, rising trend line penetrated and we still had the support of this longer, longer one. Uh, today it broke down completely below that. Uh, it was well below, as you see, below this support line, which runs across this and uh, these points along here, uh, actually closed above it. So uh, that is, uh, um, oh yeah, I wanted the one other thing I wanted to point out was We've, we've got a, a cycle has appeared. It's about a 20 day cycle, 20 trading days. And uh, you can see it's really quite irregular. And today is kind of due for a bottom in the cycle. So maybe that's what we're going to get. Notice the volume today was less than Friday's, but Friday was an option expiration day. And, uh, I'll get into why we keep track of those uh, when we get into the climax analysis. The one year chart looking uh, much uh, less promising, but you see we had a uh, rising wedge formation and it was pretty much guaranteed a breakdown. This was uh, kind of a flag, not quite very much, of, but it, it was a continuation pattern, which considering it was at the end of this little decline here, we would have expected uh, uh, it to drop down below that. Okay, I wanna look at the Silver Cross Index. 
Uh, this is the Golden Cross one. Yeah, it is. And that's not the one I want. Okay. Here we go. You're paying attention. I am. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Notice we did drop. Uh, we've been dropping pretty uh, steadily here for about uh, almost three weeks. And uh, we're at 56% of of the uh, S&P 500 stocks are on their, uh, are on a intermediate term buy signal. That's, that's not very good. That is horrible. Mm -hmm. And uh, Silver Cross for the NASDAQ composite, it's down at 42% buy signals. Mm -hmm. The New York composite is actually better than the NASDAQ. It's at 57%. New highs and new lows, not really anything interesting there. Uh, notice that the high-low differential, it's a 10-day moving average, uh, is dropping to zero because there's not, not much input recently. The three main S&P indexes, uh, we did the S&P 500, the, the 400 is at 41%. And the S&P 600 is 36% buy signals. So it's really very weak. Here's something that I was noticing uh, today. The cap weighted index actually dropped further than at a greater percentage point uh, from the September top uh, is faster than the equal weighted. Now, this is unusual because normally equal weighted index, when, it, when uh, things turn down, it will be more accelerated to the downside than the, the large cap. But here's what I think about that, is we've had half of the, the uh, S&P 500 has been uh, flat for about, uh, going on three months here, for going on four months, and it's uh, it's a uh, it's because the smaller cap stocks fell into well they fell into the doldrums. Let's say they haven't been going much of anywhere, and the large cap stocks have been holding the average up, but. But now recently, the large caps are starting to lose ground too. Now, will the, will the smaller cap stocks, will they be supporting the average? My guess is no, they won't. They, they'll be heading south with the large caps if that's where the, uh, if this uh, decline continues. Look at the weekly, so you broke a, an important rising trend line there. The volume ratios today. Hmm. Yeah, huge uh, 10, over 10 to one uh, down volume to, to uh, up volume. Now, let's get on to the climax chart. Mm -hmm. This is what we've been using. I'm going to replace that chart with a shorter term version because it allows us, we're looking, climaxes are short term. And so we ought to be looking at them much closer than, than we have been able to on that uh, chart. The, the vertical dotted lines, if it's red, it means it's a downside climax. If it's green, it's an upside climax. Um, whether it's a, uh, an initiation or not, it's, it's a, uh, yeah, or exhaustion. I'm not going to be able to distinguish it uh, any further on the chart. We'll just talk about it. But here's an interesting thing that, that has been going on. Okay, let's go back. Let's go back to that other chart because I've got it marked better there. The, uh, no. <laughs> yeah, the... The volume ratios 
in my opinion, are much more have much more weight than than any of the other climate indicators. It doesn't mean the other ones aren't important to look at, but they uh, the volume ratio is pretty clear cut. And uh, I want to from this September top, I want to just talk about what was going on. We've had a downside initiation climax, which happened actually is like five days off of the top. Uh, then there was, a, after the initiation climax, we had a day of, of uh, rest It bounced a little bit. And then following that, we had a down, uh, downside exhaustion climax. We, we uh, have to assume that it's an exhaustion because we've already had an initiation. Now, it, I wouldn't, you know, you want to wait to the next day to see what's going to happen. Uh, before you lay out any money on that, because that remains to be seen. If that's if that's just another uh, exhaustion after this pause, but after that day, we had an upside initiation climax, which at the time I thought looked pretty darn good, and we talked about that. Mm -hmm. And then the following day, a pause, which you can usually expect after climax days, but then instead of a continuation. We got a, another downside initiation. So uh, and today we have another, we have a huge uh, climax and I, I'm calling it as an, an exhaustion climax. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> How could you not after of all Of course. <laughs> but yeah, this, and uh, you see that today we had lots of votes from the other folks here. Net, net advanced declines, net advanced decline volume. Uh, new highs and lows are pretty uninteresting at this point. And of course, we have the expanded volume. Reason, and, I, and, the, and we talk about uh, this quarterly. Um, Quadruple, oh, quadruple witching. Mm -hmm. Quadruple witching uh, uh, option expiration, and the reason we make a point of, of of bringing your attention to it is because you don't want to confuse this volume, this bias wake, with anything else. Well, it happens that it ha felt on a downside initiation uh, climax day. So I will suspect that there, that the absent the option expiration, we went ahead volume up around here, but certainly adding to the climax. But this this part here, this doesn't really uh, emphasize the climax at all. It's just it's just uh, bookkeeping bias assessment again. Uh, I'd say the downside bias is pretty strong here. We've got uh, well, we, those are Friday numbers. I'm sorry. Uh, the participation numbers are still from Friday. Oh, that's true. There's uh, these two are yeah. The, mm -hmm. Even so, they're going to be lower. We know that. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, but see, it's already these are stocks. Thirty-one percent of stocks are greater, are higher than their 20 EMA. 42% are higher than the 50. This is, uh, this is very low. It, this means that the, as long as this persists, we're looking at 20 moving, 20 day moving averages being pulled uh, below the 50 day moving averages. You see, and just as we have here with the spider, it is below both of those averages. So that's causing them to go drop down and converge, guaranteed. Now, again, we have that cycle issue. So maybe we're going to get a bounce here. But um, I'm not. I know. Well, with that, you know, likely um, downside exhaustion today, I mean, we could see those higher prices. I think the, the main point, too, is that. You know, that doesn't necessarily mean we're going to get follow through 
on a bounce if we see it um, tomorrow. Right, right. Uh, exhaustion climax doesn't mean that the move is over. It could be, but it doesn't mean that. We have to see what follows. And most likely tomorrow will be an update, but I don't think it'll be another an upside initiation. I'm just guessing here, but that's what I mm -hmm. think. Let's see. Bitcoin, they had they had a bad day in the cryptos. And then let's see, this is the dollar index. It was up slightly. Gold finally had a little bit of an update, a bounce up off the uh, this support level here. It, you have to wonder about the support because of this little dip. But uh, very possibly, we're uh, going to start moving up again. Look for the PMO to bottom. Gold miners, not a very exciting day there. Yeah, participation is still just terrible. Right. And <laughs> it's been the terrible for a long time. Uh, the, these uh, greater than 50 to 6, yeah. 7%. And the stocks greater than 200 EMA is zero. Oil was down today. And uh, not quite sure what to make of that, but uh, uh, it may have just reached its uh, upside potential for a, a while. 20-year uh, T-bonds uh, bouncing. Had a, a pretty strong day. And then the 10-year. Boy, it's, I was thinking we were going to get above that line on Friday, uh, but a, a pretty strong 4 point point. 4.45% pullback today. So that's four times uh, it's been turned away. And I think <laughs> that does it for you, huh? Yes. Well, definitely give, a, give some of your opinions. I'm going to go over these um, FANG stocks. Let me first get to a chart here so I can get to them. So when you created this chart list, you were looking at the top 10 cap weighted um, stocks in uh, the S&P, if I recall. Yes. Okay. So this, you know, I've been talking about the big guys, the mega caps holding up the market for some time. And we had started to see some problems here. Here's Apple. And, you know, consequently, we saw the, the market itself having some uh, starts and uh, fits, if you will. And now we've lost some very important support here on Apple with a big gap down. We do have support lying very nearby, but again, my point is to go through these charts and just show you that relative performance against the S&P has started to uh, wane here on Apple and the majority of these FANG stocks. When you look at Adobe, uh, we also were having some problems. It looks like it held above over, uh, its support level of the 50 and closed just above this area of support. Uh, probably one of the healthier ones in the FANG Plus arena. But one of the things I did point out in my trading room this morning is that <clears throat> all of these stocks, we had warning. The PMOs were in decline or on sale, sell signals. RSIs were negative. Um, overbought readings on a lot of these. This is Amazon. You can see that uh, relative performance, it was performing about as well as the S&P. Again, one of the leadership stocks, so not surprising to see. But you can see also that right now it's starting to fail against its industry group. PMO top, pretty ugly, 3% decline. Facebook uh, lost some very important support. We had a rising wedge. We had already seen the um, drop below that wedge. So again, warning signals. It was holding above that 50-day EMA, but of course now we lost it. 
um, did come out of its lows for the day and it is sitting on some support here. So possibly Facebook might be able to rebound here. But as you can see, relative performance, uh, just dismal. Google is one of the uh, stocks that are still holding above some important support levels, uh, holding above that 50-day EMA still, but did drop below this short-term support level. And now we do have that five 20-day EMA negative crossover, uh, which isn't a good sign. And of course, the RSI is negative. PMO is continuing lower. MasterCard, another one that's struggling here. It yeah. held above this support level, but hmm? that doesn't look promising at all. You basically got uh, a rounded top over the you know in, in 2021, and it's uh, um, looking to go lower. I'd say. Yeah, RSI is negative. Notice that we have a PMO top below the signal line um, in oversold territory, so that's definitely not a good sign either. Microsoft. Big decline here as well for Microsoft. It's holding, you know, it didn't really close. If you look here in the thumbnail, it did close slightly above this short term support level, um, had a 4A below the 50 day EMA. So it did show some recovery. But again, RSI is negative now, PMO top below the signal line. In this case, there's certainly um, room for that PMO to continue lower before it hits oversold territory. Uh, relative performance starting to uh, had already started to peak last week. Netflix, another big decline. I noticed since the trading room, we did see some um, you know recovery here on these stocks, but in general, the, the picture is still very negative. We got a new PMO sell signal on Netflix. It is holding above this support level right now, but as you can see, 20-day EMA, 575.50, it did close below the 20-day EMA. Support is here, but more than likely, we're gonna see it move further down, just looking at that PMO, it's pretty ugly. NVIDIA? Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and I know another, all of these stocks, you know, big rounded top here. We were already seeing problems. Again, we already had the RSI negative, if I recall. Um, PMO had already given us a sell signal. We already were seeing the OBV um, trending lower. And look at relative strength, it really had already started to fall very low for, here for NVIDIA. And you know that was a bad sign, especially since we were at the time starting to see some strength building in the semiconductors no longer. All right, Visa. Uh, as you can see, we've got a drop below the 200 day EMA. Um, this is somewhat of a support area, I suppose you could say, coming off this top and these tops, but it did close above that level, that support zone, if you will, uh, but that declining trend is still firmly intact. RSI is negative, not quite oversold yet, and of course that PMO still spiraling lower. We can see we've had lower readings on the PMO, so yes, it is getting oversold, but is it oversold enough? Relative strength, hmm, not horrible, but not great. You know, before we go yes. further, I thought it's worth mentioning uh, that, you know, the, the big news or supposedly that started this is that a company called, a Chinese company called Evergrande uh, is the second largest property developer in China and uh, they're close to bankruptcy. And they, it was, this news was being described as a Lehman Brothers moment a long-term capital moment, uh, things that triggered rather uh, uh, scary declines in the market. So uh, we don't know. I, I don't know uh, that I would, you know, go along with that. I mean, I'm, I don't really have uh, an opinion other than that there, there's a lot of stuff out there that we're not being told. It's just 
you know, if, if you want to be on one of those uh, TV shows, you have to be a bull. And you can't bring up anything that's bad. And it's... Uh, that's it, probably why I've never been invited. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> we do tend to be kind of bearish, but, you know, ultimately that's our job when we're in a bull market is to tell you about things that are bothering us. And yeah, this was a big news item. Um, what are with some of the other news items? We, of course, got the Fed meeting this week and there's been discussion of tapering. Um, I mean, border issues. There's so many different things, you know, when I was watching the news uh, channels today that could be causing some of this damage, but ultimately participation. I mean, it's been telling us, it has been flashing that this would happen. I, you know, as much as, you know, news can help drive the markets, you know, a lot of this is baked into a chart. I mean, we already knew, like I showed all of those FANG plus stocks. I mean, the, they were already showing weakness. They were already giving us signs of trouble ahead. And of course, we've been talking about the participation within the market, just, you know, dismal and bearish bias across the board right now. So while we may see a, a nice move to the upside tomorrow, just a kind of a rat reactionary bounce uh, off of this possible downside um, exhaustion climax. I wanna see if the NYSE numbers are in yet. No, not quite. They, they're, they're quite late. Yeah. The Swinland trading oscillators didn't like today's decline at all. <laughs> but no. we're just about, uh, it's just about time to wrap up. Did you have any parting words for those of uh, you know out there trading and, and worrying right now about the market? Uh, keep your head down. <laughs> yes, keep your head down. Make sure the stops are set. Um, I didn't talk about the the um, materials signal. I have twenty seconds, so I'm just going to show you the chart very quickly. There's that twenty fifty day. Uh, EMA negative crossover. I was asked in the trading room, what's happening with materials? And I said, look, we've already known materials were in trouble. This chart was telling us. All right. And with that, um, I wish everybody happy trading. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with stockcharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.